welcome back you already know why you're here so let's get straight into doing this gelix fill-in i have been doing gelix for a while now so i have been through the ringer with trying to figure out the best way to go about doing gelix fill-ins and this is by far the best and most efficient way to do them because you don't have to worry about finished filing after you lay the gel you're good to go in with your design so first i'm just going in and i'm removing all of the gel polish i make sure that i'm very thorough when i do this because you are you're going to want to make sure that the gel and the natural nail are very very flush to one another and you want to make sure that the extension of the nail is completely smooth there's no lumps or scratches or bumps or anything so you want to be sure to be very very thorough when you're taking off the gel polish you don't have to worry about shaping right now as far as like shaping the nail back because you're going to do that later but you do want to make sure that everything is super smooth that there's no lifting my number one recommendation for doing Gelix fill-ins is make sure that you do a thorough check of the nails before you decide if you're going to do a fill-in or not because sometimes it's just easier and better to do a whole new set than it is to do a fill-in and the way that I go about doing this is I check for a lot of lifting and if there's more than two broken nails that I have to fix so no lifting <laughs> and no more than two broken nails because if there's a lot of lifting and more than that as far as the broken nails i just go ahead and do a new set because it's a lot quicker and you're going to be spending way more time doing a fill-in than you would just doing the new set so now i'm just taking my medium grit sanding band and you're you also want to be very thorough when you're doing this prep as well just make sure that you um you sand the natural nail and then you're going to take the sanding band and you're going to go over where the gel is meeting the natural nail and make sure that it's completely flush there's no harsh lines or harsh bumps or anything because this is going to be the key to a seamless um, application when you put the gel on so just make sure that when you're doing this you're being very thorough checking it from all angles all sides make sure that you're getting any dead skin that may be on the natural nail any dead cuticle so yeah just make sure that the gel is completely flush with the natural nail because I'm telling you it's, it's gonna be a time saver so when you're taking off the gel and you're doing the prep as far as sanding the nail you want to be very very thorough and i cannot say this enough this is going to be your key to everything and after this if your client does need extra cuticle care you can go in with a cuticle bit and clean up around there but honestly her nails always look pretty good she don't ever really need that extra step so i didn't go in and do that with her i just used my medium grit staining band and this is what it looks like everything is nice and flush you can hardly tell where the gel is meeting the natural nail so now i'm going in with my i believe this is 100 100 grit nail file and i'm just perfecting the shape um gel files super easily so make sure that you're not over filing when you do this step especially when you're doing like stiletto or almond shape because you can easily easily over file when you're doing this so i do go in with kind of a light touch as far as filing but i did kind of want to make them a little more narrow at the tip so that's what i did just make sure that you're not grinding into the sides of the um the nail wall the nail um just on the side where like the nail meets the skin you don't want to over file right there because that will easily cause breakage or any type of cracks or anything so make sure that you're being very light there and that it is coming out flush from the side walls to um the free edge of the nail if that makes sense <laughs> just make sure that you're not over filing that area and you can file the tip a lot more than you can the sides um so yeah we're just perfecting her almond shape um this is honestly probably my most popular shape that i do now is almond everybody loves it but this is what they look like back to normal now i'm just dusting all of that extra dust off of her nails and then i'm also going in with my manicure brush with 70 percent isopropyl alcohol and i'm just cleansing the nail bed now i'm taking my dehydrator this is ph bond by jellish dehydrator i go over the entire nail with this just to be sure that there's no oils or anything now i'm taking my my gel now this is what i'm using the picture that i just put up there i actually bought that refill bottle and i put it in here but you can use the gelish flex or the gelish foundation those are the ones that i do recommend but i honestly found that this gel that i found on amazon is the closest formula to 
the gelish foundation which is what I normally use and also it saves me a little bit of a penny so I'm going in with this and I love the brush of this bottle too which is why I put it in here because it's very flexible and just works really well with floating gel onto the nail so I'm just applying a slip layer I'm not going to cure this you're going to make sure that you cover the entire nail and cover any dry spots that may be on the nail no I do not use a primer surprise <laughs> I just find that I don't really need a primer and then I'm taking a bigger bead of the gel and I'm just going to put that at the cuticle you're gonna put more gel at the cuticle than you are at the free edge of the nail because this is where you're gonna need it the most so I just kind of flush kind of ombre the gel down the like the free edge of the nail and now I'm taking a striper brush and I'm just going to even out the gel across the entire nail you're going to make sure this is very important to not having to finish file once you get done you're going to have to check from all angles to make sure there's no lumps bumps or dents in the nail this is what the striper brush is for because it will help you even everything out and everything self level with each other you just want to make sure that the gel is completely even across the nail and once you kind of get that done um like I said, just make sure it's not running, make sure it's not running into the cuticle. You can get like, um, have like a little skinny brush on the side just in case it does start running so you can wipe the side walls of the nail. And then you're going to flash cure that for about 10 to 15 seconds just to make sure that everything is in place and so that you can move on to the next nail. So I'm going to show you one more time. I take the gel and I go over the entire, the entire nail bed. I don't use primer because I have found that honestly I my work just does a lot better without primer and I feel like it's kind of something that's not a necessity as long as you dehydrate the nail really really well. I dehydrate with alcohol and then I also use my pH bond dehydrator so I dehydrate twice before I go in with any product which I believe helps the product stick to the nail really really well. So yeah, just make sure that the whole nail is covered with the gel. Do not cure this and then you're going to go in with your bigger bead of gel. And you're just going to kind of float it down the nail just push it to the cuticle and you don't have to push this all the way to the cuticle or all the way to the side walls because the gel will naturally self level into those areas and i found if you do that you're gonna it's more likely that you're gonna flood the nail so now you're taking the striper brush again and just pulling that product down you're basically imagine if you're kind of doing an ombre so you're just kind of pulling the bigger amounts of gel towards the free edge just so that it blends and it gives you a nice apex because remember you still do need an apex so make sure that the gel is in all the right places thin at the cuticle thin at the very very free edge and thicker in the middle so that's what you're looking for whenever you're doing this method when you're checking the sides checking it looking from it up and down make sure that your apex is there and that you have a good thickness in the right places but also just make sure that there's no gel clumping up anywhere or there's any lumps or bumps, dents. Like I said before, this is very, very important because if you do have bumps or dents or anything in the nail, you're going to have to finish file because you don't want to leave your client like that. So now again, you're going in and flash curing just for about 10 to 15 seconds to hold everything in place so you can keep moving. This is what it looks like after it's out of the lamp. And now I'm taking some alcohol and I'm just wiping the sticky layer off the nail. Sometimes this isn't a necessity, but I do do it because sometimes it can cause lifting and chipping um, if you don't remove that layer because sometimes it's really, really slippery. But now I'm going in with my nude 167 Utah Veil from D&D Gel Polish. This is gonna be our nude base. This is my favorite nude to use because it looks great on everyone. Now I'm taking a little bit of top coat and some silver chrome to create like a silver um, glitter to create these little dots and we're doing like little this little kind of star design something very very simple pretty um, I'm just taking my striper brush and creating the little lines to make the stars on her nails but yeah we're just doing something simple because she's coming back for her birthday so she just wanted a little pretty design for now um which i love something simple i'm definitely a nude type of girl i love nude designs and something just really pretty and classy but see i did not have to finish file these nails this is just what they look like after applying the gel and curing it in the lamp they're completely smooth there's no lumps there's no dents or anything on these nails they look absolutely 
seamless and perfect and it is such a time saver i honestly if i just do the fill in and just uh polish it takes me an hour something simple like this i believe it took me maybe an hour and 15 minutes um now i'm just top coating so we can finish and cure them but yeah all of my services with gelix fills um and gelix the the full gelix service takes me about an hour to an hour and a half depending on if they're getting a design or not but we put the cuticle oil on this is what they look like they're absolutely beautiful stunning no finish filing i guarantee you this is the best gelix fill tutorial that you're ever going to get it's super simple super easy anybody can learn how to do it it just takes a little bit of practice thank you so much for watching and i hope you guys got something out of this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i will see you in the next one